Yo guys, what is up? Max or Diablo 4 video, and today we're going over our leveling guide for Druid for Season 4. Now, in the past, we've been given pretty good aspects to level with. Uh, for example, last season, they gave us the rabies aspect in your season progression, which would allow rabies to have really low cooldown, and you could basically just level with rabies. In prior seasons, they gave us the subterranean aspect. Subterranean, incredible aspect, would summon landslides from your poison creeper that you could just level with uh this season the new aspect has to do with maul and it's a getting more attack speed and damage reduction i think this aspect is pretty terrible uh, and i don't plan on leveling around it uh so the leveling path kind of opens wide up uh we are going to be getting targeted aspects for pulverize and if you want to go pulverize uh, i think that's going to be a pretty solid path however i'm going to be recommending something different uh, mainly one, because I'm not a huge fan of Pulverize, and two, uh, in the like Pulverize gameplay that they showed off of giving us Pulverize aspects, they didn't have the Shockwave aspect. Uh, Shockwave is the aspect for Pulverize that makes it go outwards, and if you don't have that, you're not going to want to be leveling with Pulverize, uh, and so I have a little bit of a guide recommendation, a thing that's going to be really easy to follow, so I hope you guys enjoy the guide, and let's get right into it. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the Shepherd aspect. Now, this has been dominating Druid builds for the past few seasons now. Uh, it is crazy how much damage this adds to your core and now Wrath skills, and you can pick it up as a dungeon aspect. You're going to want to go to the Blood Soaked Crag in Dry Steps, and you can grab this. It's going to save in your Codex forever, for as long as you're leveling and throughout the whole time, so you just grab it. You can slap it on any of the amulets that you you get and you're going to get a 7.5x multiplier per companion that you have with a basic skill tree setup you're going to have one poison creeper uh, you're going to get two wolves and you're going to get three ravens just putting this on your amulet gives you a 45 just get just putting this on your amulet gives you a 45 percent damage multiplier for basically any core skill that you want to run um, and the reason i want to talk about this is because it's so flexible Part of the like trick with leveling up a druid is there's so many aspects that are build defining that are just RNG if you're going to get them or not. So getting this set up, going to Bloodsoak Crag, getting this aspect sets you up for if you get subterranean, you can run a landslide build. If you get tornadoes, uh, seek enemies, you can start putting together a tornado. Uh, you can do this with pulverize. It's just going to be really good and you're kind of can set up any like core skill plus companions for a pretty solid leveling experience if you go and grab this amulet now I, uh the skill that i want to be pairing with it ideally once again like if i get a perfect aspect for like subterranean maybe i'll go landslide if i get like the perfect alpha aspect where my werewolves turn into uh werewolves and, and they like spread rabies maybe i'll go leveling with companions but this is kind of a setup that will get you going and will allow you to adjust if you want to change but the thing that I want to use for leveling personally is Lightning Storm. Now, Lightning Storm is really good because one, Hell Tides are going to be the meta for leveling, and Lightning Storm hits everything. Uh, Lightning Storm is Druid's best out of the box AoE damage skill, and it's getting some amazing changes this season that are going to make it a better leveling uh, skill than it ever has had. And the big change is to clarity now clarity reads after you cast a companion skill your next core or wrath skills damage and crit chance is increased by 15 percent up to 45 percent so this out of the box you click your three companion skills so your poison creeper your wolves and your ravens which is going to give you um like the poison for in venom which is going to give you a 30 percent crit multiplier you get 35 or sorry 45 percent crit chance and a 45% crit multi off of clicking these, and it snapshots for Lightning Storm. So as long as you're holding down Lightning Storm after you click uh, these companion skills, you, the whole channel of your Lightning Storm will get that crit chance and that crit multiplier. This is going to introduce a really good source of crit damage early on that just isn't normally a thing. It's really hard to get any synergies going with crit, typically uh, early on because it's just not great to build crit chance, except with Lightning Storm, we're going to be able to build crit chance really easily. Uh, and that's why I think Lightning Storm is going to be shredding in Helltides is because you're going to have tons of damage, way more damage than basically anything else right out the box. The other synergy that's going to be really strong with this is Pack Leader. 
Pack Leader Reads, Lucky Hit Crit Strikes have a 25% chance to reset the cooldown of your companion skills. This is notoriously not the easiest to proc when you're early on, except for with like landslides, because landslides have guaranteed critical strikes. However, with our Lightning Storm, we're going to have out of the box over 50% crit chance, and so Pack Leader is going to be able to reset pretty consistently. The reason that's so good is because Poison Creeper is Druid's best skill in the game for sub-level 50. Uh, this skill does a ton of AoE damage, does a ton of poison. You can basically walk up to a group of mobs, click it, and everything will die. Uh, you don't even need to cast Lightning Storm into them most of the time. Um, and with this build, we're going to be able to not only scale our Lightning damage a bunch, but we're also going to be getting Poison Creeper to poison everything, and we can just walk away, and we're going to be constantly resetting it and resetting all of our other companion skills so that we can get more snapshots with clarity. Uh, and I think this is just going to work out really, really well for Lightning Lightning Storm. So besides our companions plus Lightning Storm, we do have spots for two other skills. Uh, once again, uh, this whole planner will be linked on Max Roll uh, if you want to check it out. We also have a written guide for Lightning Storm. Uh, I'm specking mine a little bit differently than the Max Roll guide, so that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, but we're going to be using Wind Shear plus Wind Shear gives us movement speed. This is a great basic attack going to be able to generate a bunch of spirit for us and give us more movement speed to get around hell tides um this wild impulses is going to be basically a feel thing uh you're going to take this like very late like once you're like level 50 to get more damage once again there will be like a whole uh like breakdown of all the skills and how you go and the order that you go so obviously not something you grab early um, but we're going to grab a lightning storm we're going to make it deal more damage we can get predatory instinct for more crit chance against close enemies if something gets close to you get some more resistances um for our like companions we'd make sure that we have the brutal raven so that we get extra ravens even though crit chance is nice this is more flat damage for us with our shepherd's aspect uh poison creeper once again you're probably not going to need the 20 percent crit chance uh you can go for a ferocious poison creeper this will give you more time against poison enemies which not only increases the damage of poison creeper but it'll increase the uptime of envenom uh, you can go for crit chance here, but I'm not sure if we're going to need it. Uh, and then wolves, we can get them fortifying us. If the wolves are doing good damage, you can absolutely go for when you critically strike. You gain 25% attack speed. Uh, however, we're probably going to be going for the ferocious wolf back because we can pick up a band of retaliation for another multiplier whenever we're fortified. And this will be our primary way of fortifying. Uh, Call of the Wild makes our companions just deal more damage, aka poison creeper. And then... We grab Trample for the Spirit Gain. Uh, there's two choices for Spirit Gain. It's either Blood Howl, and Blood Howl generates 20 Spirit, or Trample, and Trample generates 40 Spirit. Uh, the choice is kind of up to you. Uh, obviously, Blood Howl is like on a lower cooldown, but it gives less Spirit. However, uh, Trample is a source of Unstoppable. Otherwise, we don't have any source of Unstoppable. So if you don't want to get CC'd and killed while you're leveling, uh, Trample is a little bit of a better option. Uh, and then we go for Envenom. Envenom gives us that damage multiplier. And then lastly, we come into our like main uh, key skills. We get Circle of Life so that we can heal. We're not going to really have any healing early. Uh, Defiance for more damage against the leads. And a few points into Natural Disaster. Uh, we are going to be immobilizing enemies. And when we're hitting those immobilized enemies, we get more damage against them. Uh, lastly, for the Keystone passive, we're going Earth Sign Strength because we're going to be transforming into a bear if we go Trample, which gives us 20% more health. Uh, and we're going to get that 30% increased damage while we're healthy. For aspects on your gear, I wouldn't focus on them too much because you're going to be getting tons of legendaries in Hell Tides. Um, and we don't typically put an aspect on our weapon because... For the most part, your weapon is going to be getting constantly swapped out. And if you're spending resources on your weapon, then you're just going to be kind of wasting them because you're going to want to upgrade the weapon sooner rather than later. Uh, it's going to be really nice if you can get a two-hander weapon with spirit on kill or resource cost reduction is going to be kind of amazing. Uh, for our damage aspects, the inner calm aspect is going to pair really well with Lightning Storm because you could just stand still in a Helltide. Once again, one of the big changes with Helltides this season is that the mobs are going to come to you. They're going to keep spawning on you. They spawn on you, you kill them. They spawn on you, you kill them. You could basically sit still, snapshot your Lightning Storm, and just wreak havoc. Uh, and so the inner calm should be actually quite a nice aspect. Uh, retaliation is going to give us even more damage when we're fortified. 
and the overcharged ban will give us another source of AoE. Whenever we're lucky hitting, we can overload. If you're struggling with Spirit, you can swap this out for a aspect of the Umbral. Uh, Umbral did get buffed, but its, it's uh, floor is still one Spirit, so it's not like the greatest thing ever. Um, and then defensive aspects, Steadfast is going to be nice. More DR, we can just use a basic attack, get DR. Um, and things like Disobedience will be nice but what before we're endgame so that we can get more armor. Um, but I do think that this is going to be a really, really comfy setup to level. We're going to be leveling faster than we ever have. So I don't think leveling builds are as important as they were for prior seasons. Uh, but I do think that if you're just looking to kind of blast and not have to go for anything too specific, uh, this is going to feel really good. Obviously, the only thing that you really need to go out of your way to go get is the Shepherd Amulet. Uh, and that's about it. In terms of our Spirit Boons, you're going to want to get Pack Leader ASAP. Make sure that this is your first pickup. Um, and then you can go for the Crit Chance and Crit Damage and also Overload so that we have more, even more AoE damage. Damage, uh, with that and then wariness should probably be your last pickup the take a uh, 10% reduced damage from elites so that is my plan for druid leveling for season four uh, i did wanted to just quickly highlight the fact that there are some really important build enabling aspects that if you do find them and you want to swap your build you can um, and these are those build enabling aspects you've got the aspect of the alpha this is the aspect that transforms your werewolves or your wolves into werewolves and gives them up to like 230 percent more damage um so if you want to play the like companion druid because companions are going to be better than they ever been uh this is the real aspect that you're looking for to really push that build far uh the aspect of the shockwave or the shockwave aspect is what you really need for pulverize obviously we're going to be getting pulverize aspects but in the gameplay that they showed off they didn't actually have the shockwave aspect and me personally i wouldn't play pulverize without shockwave so if you find that shockwave pulverize uh, is really really strong uh, and will get you into the end game the storm chasers aspect is the aspect that allows your tornadoes to seek enemies if you don't have this tornado feels okay you can like shotgun enemies with it but tornado feels a whole lot better once you get those tornadoes actually seeking in on enemies um so that's kind of a game changing aspect there for the landslide druid if you can find either the subterranean aspect or the aftershock aspect subterranean allows your poison creeper to cast landslides and the aftershock aspect allows your uh, landslides to hit more than once um these two allow landslide druid to really take off uh, Landslide Druid is also a really solid build to get you into the end game. Obviously, this guide was for Lightning Storm Druid, but if you come across the Lightning Dancers aspect, that's also another game changer for Lightning Storm. Uh, this is the aspect that when you hit enemies, you can send out those like lightning shock waves uh, that hit nearby enemies. Really, really good for Lightning Storm. And lastly, we've got the Virulent aspect. If you're looking to do like a poison. Uh, rabies build the virulent aspect is what they gave us in the season journey last season it's the aspect that whenever you hit an enemy with rabies you get seconds back on your rabies cooldown um, and so as long as rabies is spreading between enemies you basically have like 95 percent uptime on rabies it's crazy if you find this aspect you can go for a full poison rabies druid and level with that um, so that is going to be our guide for season four druid um, once again this is one option to level with there's so many cool builds that you can level with druid all of them are pretty solid, but they need specific aspects to really take off. Uh, the guide that I presented in this doesn't really need any aspects, particularly uh, besides the, uh, the Stampede aspect, and it should be really, really solid. I hope you guys enjoyed the build guide. I will catch you all in the next one. Take care. Peace.